I'm Sharon Isbin, and I'm about to walk you through how to play Batucada by Isaias Savio. Savio was a Uruguayan composer who came to Brazil in the 1930s, and his piece is evocative of the samba style from Bahia, but uses the influences of the northern part of Brazil in the Bayão. And what he does at the very beginning is use chords in E major to establish the tonality and the rhythm. And I'm using my thumb and index finger, I'll show you slowly, back and forth like a pick. And then it, each segment gets softer and softer until you're down to just one string, the sixth string. When I get there, I'm just alternating either I and M, index middle, or index NA. So in slow motion, this is how you begin the piece. Okay, and then I crescendo, make louder that last tail line as I lead into what will then become the tune. Now, in fast motion, this is what it looks like and sounds like. Now, remember to feel the offbeat, the beat that's not played. So that beat is here. So I'm exaggerating now with emotion, but if you don't feel that, it really won't move. And keep that feeling of the offbeat that's not played all the time. The piece is divided into three sections, A, B, A. You've just heard the A section. At the very end of the piece, we'll return to that, and it will end with a big loud chord like that. But before you get there, you have a very fun melodic interplay. It starts like this. Now, when you hear that, then you hear the answer in the bass, so it's important to bring the bass out. Also, in the style of this samba bayao kind of mixture, put the accent on the first note. Not, but, and then play out the bass, so it becomes. So you see now this part of the B section has played itself out in a shape that starts strong, a little bit less on the repetition, then when it moves up to here in, in A, that's the peak of it, and then it goes back down. So dynamically you have to follow the harmonic form. So after this part, we've just finished uh, back to the beginning. goes to a section which is very dissonant. Back to the striking back and forth, same, I'll play it slowly so that you see again uh, the pattern of the up and down. Soft. Softer yet. land here. So in order to do all of that, you want to really feel the contrast dynamically between this really loud part less 
Now I'm going to do something really interesting. We're now in the C major section, about to become. I'm going to do what's called ponticello, which means by the bridge. This is the bridge. This is the sound. So the closer you get to the bridge, the more metallic it is. If I move my hand away from the bridge, you can get this whole range of color. You can also get color changes by playing in one place but changing the angle of the nail. So if I'm perpendicular to the string, if I'm at an angle, I get a more mellow sound. If I want the most ponticello, in other words, the most metallic sound possible, I'll be by the bridge and I'll be perpendicular. So when I get to the C major section, this is a place where I want to have that kind of a color. So that answer, I not only move my hand towards the fingerboard to get a more dolce, uh, softer kind of sound, but I also angle the nails to get it as velvety and liquid as possible. So then you have this kind of biting, and you have this sort of sexy kind of very um, milky tone. And then what happens after that? Now you'll notice what I just did there, I used a half bar. Bar is when you take one finger, most of the time it's the index finger, and you cover all the strings at once. Half bar is when you only do it for part of it. So it starts out slowly like this. And I also did a hammer-on, what we call a slur which is a useful tool if you want something to be smooth and if it's, it goes by very quickly, you don't want to re-articulate with the, the right hand, but you actually do it with the left hand. So slowly. several times I use the half bar. Right here at the very end, I bend at the joint my finger because if I don't, I won't be able to slide into this position. And I slide the half bar up. And of course I can't do a whole bar because I'm using an open string in the bass. I did another slur pattern where in this case I slur from the half bar to these three fingers acting almost like a bar. And in, in the right hand, what's happening is that I'm repeating the I am a pattern. That's why this piece is very tricky for endurance because this is the one time where your hand will bounce just a little bit. Normally you want to try to play with, with as still a right hand as possible. But here in the bouncing effect, that's the only way to repeat these three fingers at once. So then what will happen after that Now I had another little trick here. I have to get from here to there. I use a lead finger to do that. So I'm taking this third finger and sliding it up so that I'm in position for the chord. back to the same. Feeling the offbeat. And then when you 
stop the strings at the very end, I use this side of the thumb, so it doesn't look like a karate chop. Some people do that, but it really isn't very elegant if you sort of slide your hand in, into its natural position. That can work out very nicely. And there is your Batucada by Savio. I'm Sharon Isbin, and this is Batucada by Isaias Savio. <laughs>